This month's battle is the Battle of the Philly Cheesesteak. Now, both of these recipes are very non-traditional, but they still stick to their roots. In one corner, we have the creamiest of creamiest Philly cheesesteaks, and then we have the Thai-inspired Philly cheesesteak. You guys won't know whose belongs to whose, whether or not one is a challenger's or mine. That's for you to find out at the end and for our judges to learn after they've tasted them. Look at this, look at how thick this ribeye is. It's, it's freaking amazing. Speaking of which, we're gonna pop this in the freezer for about 20 minutes so we can slice this really thinly for when we do our Philly cheesesteaks, because otherwise it's gonna be kind of a pain to get thin. I don't have one of those fancy slicers like all those other people do, you know? Just keeping it real here. Now while that's freezing, let's get some of the mise en place ready. Now when I think of Philly cheesesteak, the first thing that comes to mind are the peppers. I am using both green and red bell peppers. And since both Philly cheesesteaks are going to get these, we're gonna prep them the same way. We're gonna start off by doing a nice julienne on each of these peppers. Now the easiest way to do this is make sure you have all of your peppers ready to go, just like this. With all of the seeds mostly removed, you can remove more of this membrane if you really want to, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. And once you have your bell peppers like this, we're just gonna give them a nice julienne. You kinda want them, you know, a little thick like this, nothing too crazy, this is gonna be good to go. Now we're gonna take all of our green bell peppers, we're gonna put them in a separate container so we're not mixing them, so this way we can pick and choose how much we want of each, which is probably gonna be 50-50, let's be honest. Should have picked a bigger boat. That's ready to go. Yes, I am eating the bell peppers. Let's do the red as well. If your knife isn't as sharp as this one, first of all, get it sharp, just like this, but you can also do it on the opposite side. If you do it skin side down, it actually is easier to cut your bell peppers. Now that we have all of our reds. Let's go and pop this in our container. Get this ready to go. I'm gonna take this one and eat it. Oh, so sweet. Next up is an onion. You have to have onions with your cheesesteaks. I don't care how else you make it, onions are pretty integral. Now I'm gonna cut the onions just about the same way. We're gonna do a nice little julienne. So you're gonna start it to where, you see how, how it's ringed like this? We're gonna cut from this side, cut from the opposite side, yeah? Now once you have all of your onions cut up, I actually have some leftover from the other day when I was making a salad. So we're just gonna add this to this. It's only a day apart, it's gonna be fine. Now that we have the core parts of our cheesesteaks ready with our onions, our green and red bell peppers, we're also gonna do some garlic for a few things, and then you're ready to go for the most part. We're just gonna have to make a few sauces, and this is gonna be a quick battle. Get all this put away. Should I do it? Should I do it? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna juggle these. Now the next thing we need is some garlic chopped up for both of the sauces for the Philly cheesesteaks. Now what's nice is that both recipes call for chopped garlic, so this makes my life a bit easier rather than having to grate them or anything like that. Now once you have your garlic nice and thin, this is when we can start chopping it. And then once your garlic is chopped, this is ready to go. We're gonna split this pretty evenly, so that way we can just do half for each sauce. Just try to make it as even as possible. It's not that big of a deal for each one of them. And there's our two little portions of garlic. That's all we needed to do with it. Now for the creamiest Philly cheesesteak, I need some Worcestershire Myrtle sauce. We're only gonna need around 15 to 20 milliliters of this, according to the recipe. We're gonna do, we're gonna do 20. We're gonna do 20, 20 22 grams. It also mentioned chili sauce of choice. I'm gonna use sriracha, which is a brand new bottle and now I have to open it. Now we need four grams worth of sriracha. So we're gonna bring the total to 26 grams. How did it climb to 29? That's, this'll be fine. And then finally, just one portion of our garlic. Give this a quick mix. Make sure all of that goodness is together. This is actually gonna go onto the steak before we cook it. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, oh that's good. <clears throat> that's good. Now for the second sauce, for the Thai-inspired Philly cheesesteak, we're going to need a small bunch of cilantro, some good old fish sauce, one massive lime, apparently, some Thai chilies, a touch of sugar, and then also that other garlic that we chopped up. Now this also says we need to zest our lime, so we're gonna zest the lime first and then juice it and then cut everything else up. Remember, when you're zesting a fruit or a citrus or anything like that, you wanna make sure you don't get too much of the white pith in there because that's what actually makes it pretty bitter. Now that we have all of that niceness in there zested, we're gonna go ahead and juice this directly into that lime zest. Rolling it on the cutting board does help relieve some of, it, of its juices before you go to cut it. Some people like boil them and do weird things. Just, just roll it out, you know, it'll be fine. That is one juicy lime. I hope that it's gonna be okay with all of this. Look at how much juice I got out of that lime. Can you can you see how much is in there? Look at look at that. It's amazing. Next, we're gonna do the cilantro. Now we are gonna use the stems, except for this one. It's looking kind of off. We're gonna use the stems as well because the stems have a lot of flavor. Give this a nice chop, making sure it's broken down as much as you can. I don't think we would want to use a food processor for this because it would more turn into a puree than kind of just chopped bits that's gonna go on the steak. Now once you have your cilantro all nicely chopped up just like this, pop all of that right into your lime zest and your lime juice. Clean up your station. 
And now finally for the Thai chilies. Now the recipe says for, I think it was seven Thai chilies, but we're gonna see how spicy these are and because these can be very, very spicy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna cut one in half and just, if you don't pull back right away, it's probably not that spicy and I'm not. So I am going to use all the Thai chilies that it said for the recipe. We're gonna slice them super, super thin. I'm gonna show you what we want these to look like. Just kind of like that. Can you barely see that on my knife? That's how thin we want these. So I'm gonna go ahead and start slicing these guys up, making sure I don't get it into my eyeballs because I've done that with Thai chilies before. Very unfortunate. See that? That's kind of what you're going for with Thai chilies. You want them super thin. Now, once you have all your Thai chilies cut, place them directly into the bowl. We are almost done with this one. At this point, we can just add the garlic. It's not gonna make a difference right now. And then finally, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need our fish sauce and our sugar. And it says to use around 10 grams worth of sugar. Oop, that's that's way too much. 9.9. .9. Nine, this is what nine grams of sugar looks like, yeah? Okay. Boom, right into that. How did it get onto the cutting board? Nobody has to know. We also need 10 grams worth of fish sauce. This also goes a long way. This is, this is that's 10 grams, yeah? That's just nothing. Now we're gonna give this a quick mix. It's gonna be, it looks like it's almost more of a paste than it is a sauce like the other one is. But oh man, the smells coming out of this are amazing. We also need to season this with just a pinch of salt if needed, it says, because I know that the fish sauce can be salty. But look at, look at this. It almost looks like a, almost looks like a Thai, almost like a gremolata. That is really cool. Oh, this is gonna be so spicy. Oh, that is, oh, yeah, spicy. <laughs> Probably, <clears throat> probably shouldn't have used all seven of those chilies. Oh my God. Even though it's spicy, the burn is so nice. We're gonna, we're gonna leave it. That's, wow. <clears throat> okay, throw a lid on that guy. Cause uh, that's gonna, that's gonna destroy the entire fridge and kitchen at this point. We're gonna throw those in the fridge. Now that the sauces are done for each of the Philly cheesesteaks, I'm gonna clean the cutting board because we cut chilies and a bunch of other stuff on it before we cut that ribeye. So you don't have too many crosses of flavor. Now our steak has been in the freezer since we kind of started everything and it's firmed up just a bit. You don't want this completely frozen. Otherwise it will be a pain to start cutting. If you have a slicer, you have a butcher willing to slice this thin for you for your Philly cheesesteaks, go that route. It's gonna be so much easier than trying to do this, but this is the next best step. Now this is a this is a honker. Why would you eat this whole steak? I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. Oh, it may actually still need some time because it's such a thick piece of meat. But what I wanna try to do is slice it thin. That's that's usually how you would slice it. You would slice, you'd throw this on the slicer, right? To where my hand is the blade and you would do this with it. I'm gonna try to slice it that way and get them super, super thin. This way, when we go to cook them, a lot of those fats will render really nicely. It's still fairly difficult to cut, but I think this will be really nice. We can we can spend some time doing this. Take your time cutting this this way. It's going to make the difference. Now, as I got towards the end of that ribeye, it's a little harder to cut when it's this cut right here. It's a, it's a little thicker. I can't really get it at an angle properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna shave it um, almost like I'm slicing the ribeye. I'm gonna trim some of this fat and then we're just going to like just very carefully slice this almost like you're just cutting a normal steak, but try to get it as thin as possible. So this way you're still getting nice thin slices. They're just not as big as the previous ones were, but I think this is gonna work out really well too. Maybe I'll get one of those electric slicers like Andong. Now we have most of our meat sliced really, really thin. And now what we can do is just cover this with some plastic wrap until we need it. This can firm up while we're getting everything else ready. You can do this a day ahead. Or what I was thinking is if you have an Asian, like Japanese grocery near you, you can actually just purchase, I think it's like the sukiyaki meat that's already sliced really thin. A lot of the time that's top round, sometimes you'll find ribeye at a more premium spot, but you can use that instead of doing this if you have one locally. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to make Philly cheesesteaks. There they are, the, weir the weirdos in the background. Now we can make sandwiches. Oh, look inside the kit. The first one we're gonna make is the cheesiest Philly cheesesteak. That one is gonna require a nonstick skillet. We're gonna toast the bread on the cast iron that I have on the other side. Y'all ain't gonna poop right for a month. So I'm also using some local hoagie rolls that I picked up from the market. So we're gonna be using these, but feel free to use whatever rolls you want. You know, this, this is what we're using. Hoagie rolls. So we're gonna bring our pan to a medium high heat. And then I have all of this steak out of the fridge. Half of it is gonna be for the other cheesesteak. So we only need half right now. We're gonna hit the pan with just a touch of oil. We don't need too much because the ribeye is super fatty, just enough so nothing really sticks too hard. Onions, bell peppers, other bell peppers, cream cheese and cheddar. Oh. So what I'm gonna do to kind of test to make sure the pan is ready, we're gonna take a small portion of our steak. It's super thin, so this is gonna cook quick. Yeah, you see how, how thin this guy is? That's, uh, that's close, that's close. Oh yes, it's gonna be my snack. That only took like five seconds. So we're gonna put about half of our steak in. So we're gonna make two sandwiches. This way, each of the girls will get a half sandwich. So that way they get a full sandwich when we make the other ones. Oh, no more for you heathens. Oh my God. Oh my God, what's happening? Gandalf is freaking out. I'm, I'm worried for their safety. And we're gonna season this with just salt and pepper to start. 
and then we're gonna take two of our hoagie rolls and we're gonna place them on this cast iron that I have kind of warming up, start toasting them on both the bottom and top and then we'll open them up and try to get them toasted in the middle as well. Since I don't have silicone tongs, I'm using my chopsticks for this part. Uh, note to self, invest in silicone tongs. So we're just cooking this just until we can't see any more red in that meat, but it's not overcooked at that point. <laughs> Yes, yes. Now what you can also do is make sure you taste it. Taste it for salt. Pinch more salt. The buns are getting kind of warm. I'm gonna keep them on the back so they stay nice and crispy on that side. And then with this recipe, once the meat doesn't have too much red and it has a slight amount of color, turn off the heat and then we're gonna remove the meat and place it into the bowl, keeping some of that liquid in the pan. Now we're going to saute up some of our bell peppers, both the red, turn this back on, obviously, that would be, that'd be smart. We're gonna do an equal amount of red bell pepper and green bell pepper. We're also gonna throw an equal amount of onions into here. Give this a quick toss, make sure everything's kind of incorporated. Get this, this onion back in there. Season this with salt and pepper as well. Now we're gonna cover this for about three to four minutes until those start to get tender, then we're gonna add the sauce. After a couple of minutes, we're gonna pop in all of our sauce that we made earlier. This is the Worcestershire, the garlic chili sauce that was in this one. Give this another quick toss, we're gonna cover it and just kinda let it cook for another few minutes until everything is softened up. Boom, we're gonna let that cook over a medium heat. Keep an eye on the bread too. This feels like it's getting pretty warm. Ooh, that's toasty. We're gonna pull these off. Yes, yeah. It's Abigail. She has returned to eat our food. After a few minutes, the onions and the bell peppers should be pretty tender. You can see when you pick it up, it has some slight bend to it. That's what you're really looking for. We're gonna add about 15 grams of butter. Then we're gonna throw all of our meat back in and start incorporating all of this. Now with this over a medium heat, we're gonna add our cheeses. First is gonna be our cream cheese. I'm gonna take a few chunks of cream cheese, drop this in here. This is gonna kind of almost make it into what would look like a stroganoff. Make sure that all of this cream cheese melts down. Keep it on a low heat now. Make sure it does get fully melted and fully incorporated. You can probably just kill the heat. You can see that once you start melting it down, it starts turning into a sauce. You wanna make sure all of that sauce is tossed. At this point, it's gonna just be easier to use a spoon, start mixing it together. Now, once most of your cream cheese is melted, this is where we're gonna kind of evenly spread it out into your pan, and we're gonna top this with cheddar cheese. So I'm gonna kill the heat completely. We're gonna top this with some shredded cheddar. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this, let that cheese melt for just a few minutes, and then we're ready to plate it. Now, the cheese isn't fully melted yet, so we're gonna toss this together. You're gonna have nice chunks of cheese in here, and this is ready to turn into sandwiches. Look at, look at this, this monster. We're gonna take our toasted hoagie roll, layer this right into there. Oh my God, this is, this is, the, this is it. Look at this. We're gonna make sure that these are super loaded. We are gonna do two, so I'm gonna set this one gently here, fill up the second one real quick, make some room. So much meat. Look at, look at these two. Now, since there are three of them, I'm gonna cut each of these in half so I can also have some because I am starving. We're gonna cut each of these in half, try to press this in just a bit so this way it actually can cut. Oh my God, this cross section is gonna be insane. Do you guys wanna, we should show this to you guys. Look at that cross section. That's all you could ever want. One here, Let's cut the other one right away. One more, we'll leave this one on the cutting board so I can, I can for me. Huzzah! Like Hello. So the first one is the cheesiest Philly cheese steak. Ooh. This one is, a cream cheese sauce with cheddar cheese, then a Worcestershire and garlic chili dressing with bell peppers, onions, the works on a hoagie. Help yourselves, enjoy. Holy crap. <laughs> it's a bad time to say that I hate messy food. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. Can we have forks? I'm at them. <laughs> well, thank you. That is super cheesy. Mm -hmm. Is it the cheesiest? It's the cheesiest, cheesiest because I've never had one before. You've what? never had a cheesesteak before? No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why did we invite you? <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> this is really good. This is I delicious. Like, this is like a new comfort food. Mm -hmm. Songs like, the peppers. I like whatever cheese is in here. Right? Oh, cream cheese. No wonder I like it. Cream cheese is like my favorite food group. Messy foods are difficult for me. <laughs> you just can't put it down. That's the goal. It's like a good burrito. You can't put down a good burrito. It has really nice flavor. Mm -hmm. I always worry with things like, I always worry with things like this that it's just gonna be like a muddled flavor. Like it all just blend together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is really distinct. Like everything, I can taste everything. It's delicious. It's a very good bread to meat ratio. I'll <laughs> let you guys enjoy those. I'm gonna start the next one. So while they're finishing up those sandwiches, we're gonna make the Thai inspired Philly cheesesteak next. This one should go just as quick because Philly cheesesteaks don't take a lot of time to prep. So now what we're gonna do is this entire flat top is on. I'm using the flat top for this cheesesteak rather than the pan. We're gonna start our onions and our bell peppers on this side and kind of get these going. And I actually have this on a really low temp for this recipe. This recipe calls for the, the temp to be actually lower rather than higher. 
We're gonna season these with just a touch of salt and pepper as well. Get these going. Gonna need a nap off for all this. Get that rogue onion. We're gonna let these cook until they get tender and then we're gonna start some of that steak. So when these bell peppers are starting to get somewhat tender, I'm actually gonna break these down a bit more so they're not huge pieces. Just so that way they're, you know, you could have probably cut them up ahead of time, which I should have according to the recipe, but uh, this is fine. We're just gonna do this. Now once you're at this stage, we're gonna start cooking the ribeye and we're gonna cook this pretty slow and low. I have my I have my burner really, really low right now. We're just gonna lay the ribeye right onto here. We're not gonna season it yet. We're gonna season it close to when we're ready to serve it. I am gonna season this with black pepper, just not the salt. We don't wanna extract too much moisture according to this. I still need to toast the bread, so we gotta find some room. Now once you have it lightly rendered and there's not too much color left, this is when we're gonna combine it with the bell peppers. Now, once you have everything combined, I'm gonna move it over to this side of my, my flat top just to keep warm, because that's just not, it's not too hot on that side, and we're gonna toast the buns and get this ready. Also, don't forget to salt this because we didn't earlier. This is when we're gonna hit this with some salt. Give this a nice toss. Spread this out as evenly as you can. Try to get it out of any grooves if you're using a flat top like this. Well, now we're gonna toss it with cheese. Actually, before we add the cheese, we're gonna add some of the uh, the, the Thai chili sauce first. We only need a little, because we're supposed to put some on the bread too. Gandalf, are you so angry? Do you want Thai chili sauce? Now we're gonna hit this with our cheese, get it a nice coating on there. Yeah. Yes, do one of those. And then we're gonna finish toasting our bread because we kind of started this earlier, but I wanna make sure that it's toasted on the inside. This is good. Let the cheese melt. Now that our bread is mostly toasted, this, they, kind of, they kind of broke apart, but these should be still fine to use. This one is also good to go. Now for our, oh, okay. Now we're gonna toss all that together. Gonna kill the heat, make sure it doesn't overcook. Give this a quick toss. This should be ready to plate up. Grab your spatula to make sure you get all that cook cheese off the bottom because there's a lot of flavor in that. We're gonna do one of these. Oh, look at, get a nice portion in each of these. Look at, look at that. Gonna lay this right here so I can get the other one ready. Yes. Plate these guys up. We're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're gonna press all the steak into the sandwich so that way it doesn't fall out, hopefully. Give this a cut. And then we're gonna top it off with more of our chili sauce here then this is ready to go. Look at, look at that. Gandalf, please don't eat this. No kitty emergencies today. This one is the Thai inspired cheese steak. This one has a Thai, Thai there's, there's some in there. A Thai chili <laughs> and garlic gremolata with the cheese steak and mozzarella, same bell peppers, onions, everything is on there. This Enjoy. smell is incredible. That was the first thing that just like, Right in the face. Right in the face. Yeah. Is it juicy? That's a little juicy. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's so different. Super different. Could use a little bit more flavor. I don't taste the cheese very much. I don't taste the cheese at all. I'm getting a lot of Thai chili. A lot of citrus. Is there citrus in there? In the lime sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's see. Let's, let's do more. I feel like it needs more seasoning. Whoa! This reminds me so much of a banh mi. Mm -hmm. Completely different also. Mm -hmm. I just want more. I'm getting juice everywhere! <laughs> God darn it! <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just don't know if I could compare this to it or whatever cheesesteak of any kind. Ooh, no, it's good. I'm getting, I'm getting the cheesiness. I'm getting the steak, the onions. I wish there was more cheese because I feel like I'm just not getting a lot of cheese. I don't know if it that's doesn't, just like mine. It doesn't but... help that we just had the cheesiest one right before this. <laughs> that is true. Yes. It's very good though. I love the flavors of whatever this is. I like the spiciness. Yeah, I yes. would just like eat a bowl of this. Because I think the, the other one was missing like don't some make spiciness. <laughs> You over there making dirty comments in the corner? <laughs> Me? You. <clears throat> yes. All of the above. All of the above. Mm -hmm. Definitely need more of that to give it more yeah. flavor. I disagree. But I I mean, I took all the peppers out of mine. That's why I added oh. more because I'm not getting any of that taste. Mm -hmm. I but. think it's really good. Honestly, like it's actually like a little too acidic for me. Oh. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, just because like so much of what I'm tasting is lime right now. See, and I'm like over here just going, give it more. You really love sour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would definitely like that's delicious. Mm hmm. I don't know. Like, cheese. Abigail's upset about the cheese. <laughs> more cheese. I want more cheese! <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's kind of hard to compare them. Like, they're two totally different sandwiches. And, it, like, as far as a cheese steak goes, the first one. But then, as far as, like, an all around sandwich goes, like, I like this one because of the acidity and the spiciness. This one is a lot lighter than the first one. Yes. I was about to say, I could eat more of this. Yes, I could eat a lot more of this. 
So in the Battle of the Cheesesteak, pull the, you know, one for the first one, two for the second one. Yeah, cheesesteak. Nice. That was Challenger Hansen's cheesesteak. Congratulations, Hansen's for riggin' delicious. Yes. Congrats, Hansen, on the win. The knife is on your way. If you guys want to send your own recipes, the link is down below for that. I'm going to enjoy myself some cheesesteaks. You guys can enjoy some brand new shirts over at ChefPK.com for these brand new Kohai t-shirts that I have. My name is Chef PK. Get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. I'm like, I don't know which one to start with. Should I start with the cheesiest one first? The cheesiest one first. Okay, and then eat the other one? Yeah. Sweet. So much.